Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna do Christy Swanson's top 10 best movies. She's definitely one of my favorite actresses. She's extremely talented and underrated in her ability to perform. And as I get older, I realize how many phonies there are in the cancel cult that is Hollywood. So it's refreshing to see someone in the business that's still able to think for herself. I grew up with a lot of her films and I think it's gonna be a fun list because of how many underrated, not so well-known films that are on here. But first, I'd just like to mention some of her films that I enjoy, but her part was just too small for me to consider it. Those films are Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Pretty in Pink, and Big Daddy. And lastly, I'd just like to mention that she filmed a scene for one of my favorite films, To Live and Die in L.A. in 1985. But it, unfortunately, it ended up getting cut. Now, time for the list. So sit back, relax, let the show begin. Number 10! Bad to the Bone. Released in 1997 and directed by Bill L. Norton, this was a TV movie based on a real-life event. Not many people know about this one, but it's really good for a TV movie. Chrissy Swanson mostly does TV films nowadays, and a lot of them are really good if you give them a chance. Bad to the Bone is a hard one to find, but seeing it back when I was 10, it was a great watch. Christy is excellent as a seductive, conniving, gold-digging evil woman. Her stepfather used to hit her when she was younger. She's 19 now and her stepfather is dead. And she resents her mother for not doing anything about it. She finds out that if her mother dies, she will inherit a half a million dollars. And surprise, surprise, the mom mysteriously winds up dead. It's a fun watch with a solid cast. Jeremy London plays her brother. It's an interesting story and Christy Swanson's performance makes this TV film one of the more memorable, that's for sure. Number nine is Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. Released in 1997 and directed by Tom Shulman, this film is hilarious. It didn't do well at the box office, but it's just an off-the-wall, laugh-out-loud comedy. It's one of the strangest titles for a film, too. And the story is just as strange, and I love it. Joe Pesci is hilarious as a wise guy bringing a bag of heads to his boss when his bag gets mixed up with someone else's bag, leading Joe Pesci on a quest to get the bag back or he's dead. Christy Swanson is Charlie's girlfriend. She's fantastic, as always. When Charlie realizes he has a bag of heads while on vacation in Mexico with his girlfriend and her family, I just can't stop laughing from that point on. Such a fun film, a great underrated off-the-wall comedy. Number 8 is The Phantom! Released in 1996 and directed by Simon Winsor, The Phantom was supposed to be the first of a trilogy, but it failed at the box office. I always enjoyed this one though. I used to have the ring when I was a kid. It suffered the same fate as another similar film in 1994, The Shadow. The Phantom isn't perfect, but it's better than most superhero films today. I like Billy Zane as an actor, but maybe he wasn't the best choice to carry the franchise. Nonetheless, it's an excellent cast all around. With Christy Swanson, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Treat Williams, and James Remar, among others, all giving great performances. The Phantom is always a fun watch. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. Number seven is Deadly Friend. Released in 1986 and directed by Wes Craven, this was Christy Swanson's first starring role. Wes Craven's original cut was more of a dark love story than a horror film, but the studio made him do reshoots and not a lot more gore, which annoyed Wes Craven because at the time he wanted to step away from horror to show he could direct different types of films. John Carpenter's Starman was a big influence on uh, Craven for him to try to step away from straight up horror. He even told Christy Swanson to watch Starman to prepare for the role. You can see Jeff Bridges type movements in Christy's performance. I really enjoy this film. It's pretty dark, but it's different. You don't see movies like this too often. And for Christy Swanson's first starring role in a studio film, she carries the film very nicely. Number six is Flowers in the Attic. Released in 1987 and directed by Jeffrey Bloom. What a disturbing little hidden gem this is. Wes Craven almost directed it, and if he had, it would have been back-to-back -back films with Christy Swanson, making them sort of like the John Hughes Molly Ringwald of the horror genre. But Jeffrey Bloom directed it instead, and for someone who's no more for writing, it does a great job. Christy Swanson and her three other siblings are brought by their mother to live with their religious grandparents after their father dies. Oh boy, the grandmother is played by Louise Fletcher. You may remember her from uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest as Nurse Ratchet. If you thought she was bad in that film, oh boy. She's nuts in this one as well. <laughs> I love the look of the mansion. It's a great location for a film. The kids are locked in a room with a hidden door leading to the attic. The mother wants to please her father so she can be put back in the will after abandoning her family for many years. 
But uh, the family is nuts and the kids have to find a way out of the mansion before it's too late. Number five is The Chase. Released in 1994 and directed by Adam Rifkin, Christy Swanson and Charlie Sheen appeared in two other films together with Hot Shots and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. The Chase is so awesome. Christy was offered another movie in 1994, Dumb and Dumber, where Christy Swanson would have played Mary Swanson, but she turned it down and inadvertently was responsible for Lauren Holly and Jim Carrey's marriage and their subsequent divorce. But back to The Chase. This film is such a fun ride. Charlie Sheen and Christy Swanson's chemistry is excellent. While pretty much stuck in a car the whole film, there's so many great car chase sequences, lots of fun dialogue. The cast is great all around. You even got Anthony Kiedis and Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers making appearances in this film. Not too many people talk about this one nowadays, but I think it's an excellent 90s comedy that should be more appreciated. Number four is Higher Learning. Released in 1995 and directed by John Singleton, it's a very interesting film that touches on some pretty dark subject matter. Higher Learning was a pretty big hit, making nearly $40 million at the box office. Has a phenomenal cast, excellent performances all around. Christy Swanson, Omar Epps, and Michael Rappaport are the three main stars. And because it's a John Singleton film, there's lots of actors from Boys in the Hood in this film. Even Randall Battenkopf, Christy Swanson's co-star from Buffy. You know, the guy that smells the Dorito? Yeah, him. He has a few scenes in here. We even got Andrew Brynjowski in the film. Brynjowski and Omar Epps both starred with Christy Swanson in the program. It's an excellent film with a shocking ending. It ends with the word unlearn, suggesting the only way to truly heal is to unlearn what you've been taught and to reach a higher state of consciousness and learn the truth for yourself. Number three is The Program. Released in 1993 and directed by David S. Ward, the program is my favorite football film of all time. I love the cast all around, the football scenes are excellent, and James Caan as the coach is perfect. And Christy Swanson with black hair! That's worth the price of admission alone. I remember watching the preview when I was a kid and seeing the scene where the guys are all lying in the middle of the road while cars are flying by them. And I thought, wow, what a crazy scene. Then I got my VHS copy, though. And that scene was missing. Many years later, I found out, though, it was removed because people were emulating that scene in real life and actually getting hurt. You can now see that scene on YouTube. It's an awesome scene. The program is so much fun. I always enjoy revisiting this one. Number two is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Released in 1992 and directed by Fran Rubel Kazooie, this is definitely Christy Swanson's most iconic role. It wasn't a huge box office success, but it became a cult classic through video store rentals and television airings. This film still holds up today. It's got a fun young cast with some great veteran actors in Donald Sutherland and Rutger Hauer. In the early 90s, 90210 was the biggest show on TV. I never missed an episode. <laughs> Luke Perry definitely got hired through his popularity at the time. They even put him on the poster alongside Christy Swanson. They should have at least added Sutherland on the other side. But they didn't. Still a great movie, and I love Luke Perry in the film. The film doesn't feel outdated. I really enjoy this film. I still watch it a ton today. It's a blast. Uh, number one is Highway to Hell. Released in 1991 and directed by Aid de Young, this film is one of the most unique little horror comedies of all time. It's so underrated. I love the bizarre story and setting. The cast is fantastic. There's a lot of fun cameos. Christy Swanson and Chad Lowe are great while trying to escape hell. Patrick Bergen as Bezel is fantastic. He's a very underrated actor. I also love the makeup effects by Steve Johnson, especially for the Hell Cop. Such a cool look. The music isn't the greatest, but if you love the 80s like me, it won't bother you. Not many people know about this film, and nostalgia plays a huge part in my decision making, and the nostalgia is through the roof on this one. Highway to Hell is the ultimate hidden gem, and it's Christy Swanson's best movie. Anyways, guys, that's the list. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. You're gonna get it, bitch.